Hi everybody, and today I am going to be doing another craft. Now, what I have is more filigree. So these are ones I haven't used out of the filigree templates. And if you want to see all my others, just check out my other videos on my page. So this is my new craft. It's a filigree templates. I uh, showed you on one of the videos, which is on this page, all the different shapes and sizes. So I'm going to make a necklace with this. And so for the supplies you're going to need are the filigree templates. They come in a mixed and I got this set from Panda Hall off of Amazon. I will try to put the link in the description above the video. Um, now the links to my other videos, I do not have it even though in the video I said but that's because I, they used to be on YouTube and, and there was the description box below and I used to put the link. So if you have any questions about any of the products, ask me and then I will comment you back with the links to those products if I still have them, okay? But the supplies that you're going to need for this project are the filigree templates, these acrylic gemstones, it's assorted colors and sizes, but they're all the same shape. They're all round. The next thing you're going to need, of course, are your jewelry working tools. Then you're going to need some chain. Now, because I'm working with the color in brass, I had to get all brass findings. For those who don't know what findings are, they're the supplies that you use to make your jewelry. When you're creating, you're going to need supplies and chain and jump rings and all that. So I got make sure that all your findings are the same color as what you're working with. I'm going to need some jump rings. I got six millimeters and four millimeters because it's good to have a different variation in sizes. Also, I've got some brass clasps. These lobster claws in brass. So the other thing you're going to need is some E6000 jewelry glue. It's optional, but you can get a tweezer for when working with these. They come in handy when handling these gemstones and then placing them. But if you feel like your finger does the job, then use that. Another thing it would be to toothpick and some paper towels or a rag of some sort. And the reason why you're going to need the toothpick is for the glue, okay? Now, you can get beads and add beads in between if that's what you want. But I think I'm just going to let these elements speak for themselves because I was playing around with the beads. And I found that this is the clean look and not being too complicated or too busy. So, let's get started. Okay, so in this project, we are going to first start with figuring out which shape you want from your filigree set. And I chose these because I already did crafts with all my other shapes. And I decided maybe make a small necklace. It won't be a choker, but it won't be too long of a necklace with these three. And just one gemstone. Now I was going to stick some little gemstones around, but I didn't do that because then it's too busy. I want it to look simple. I want it to be clean, simplistic, and I want it to look a little elegant without too much going on and too busy. So the first thing you want to do before you start using your E6000 jewelry glue is place your gemstones, whatever color you choose, whatever shape and size you choose and decide where you're going to put them and look at them before you go ahead and just glue them. So I like that. I was happy with that. So now the next step is we're going to glue them. And once 
the glue dries, it takes about 30 minutes or so, but 24 hours actually for the E6000 glue to completely cure and dry. So if you're going to make these to give as a gift or to sell, you're going to want to make sure that that glue has been cured and dried for 24 hours before packaging and sending them off. Also before wearing these if you're keeping it for yourself, but to work with you want to wait at least 20 minutes or so and then you can incorporate the chain. Or before you glue those, which I'm going to do, before I glue these to my filigree templates, I'm going to, once I figure out that those look good and those are the color and size, and if you're different, working with different shapes, those are the shapes that you want, what you're gonna do is you're going to, uh, that's my heat kicking on, so. What you're going to want to do is decide how far away you're going to want these to be spaced. Do you want it like this? Do you want them closer? Do you want more chain? So I'm not going to do it too far apart, but I'm not going to do it too close either. I think this is a good amount. They're about almost an inch apart from each other because you want to make sure it's even because you're going to be cutting the chain so that's our next step once you do that your next step is to get your chain and I got this brass chain from Hobby Lobby it's metal gallery and they give you quite a bit they give you about six yards I've already used some but very little and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my jewelry working tools. I'm going to get my cutter. But before I do that, I'm going to lay it flat on here and see. Is that how much chain I want? I want to make sure they're the same size. So you got to take into account your jump rings. So I think I'm just going to go over here. I can always go and remove took my cutter and I cut a piece of chain. Very small piece. It's not that big. So what I'm going to also do is on the other side, rather than hook them up, I'm going to make sure that they're both the same length. Get your round nose and your chain nose pliers and now you're going to decide which jump ring size. I again have a six millimeter and a four millimeter. So do I want the big six millimeter or the small four millimeter? Where I'm going to stick the jump ring, but on one side. So you have to decide if it's going to be the bottom part or the top. I think the bottom part and you have to do the same on the other one. So now that I did that, I'm going to also hang my chain then I'm going to close it, taking my jump nose, taking my round nose and my chain nose. And make sure it's closed all the way because you don't want your chain slipping out. Okay, so make sure you get the front of it. Now I'm going to do the same thing over here again to the bottom part. So I went ahead and connected my jump ring and chain to this side as well. Now I want to make sure they are exactly the same length and I didn't mistakenly cut any. So when you're going to wear them, it's going to end up going like this. And if I'm happy with that, or did I want to stick this here so this hangs a little lower? So I'm going to try that out because I'm not sure I like. So it's either I can keep them here, or if I want this to be a little lower, I can move the jump ring to the top holes, or even higher for this to hang lower. But I think I like it this way. I can always change that later. It's not a big deal. I simply just remove the jump rings and then connect it on a different area. So that's nothing that can't be done later if I decide to change my mind. I don't like the way that looks. Okay, so now I'm going to decide, do I want to put any beads with the chain over here? So I would take my chain and go like that and decide how long I want this. 
Now 16 inches is the typical length for a choker, but um, I might just go 18 inches because I don't really want a long piece of necklace, but that's your preference. Do whatever you want. If you want a longer necklace, then that's fine. So I'm just going to go with my eye and kind of look at that because you will be adding a jump ring and then a clasp and then another jump ring for the clasp to attach. So once you're kind of happy with the way that looks, you can play around with some beads. See, do you want a bead over here? Do you want eye catching? Like a, another bead that is round or flat? This is the time to start thinking about it because it will add length to your necklace. So if you do it afterwards, you're going to then have to clip, cut some of your uh, links off of your chain. So you might want to think about doing that now rather than waiting till later. I'm still unsure if I want to be there. Part of me does, and then the other parts, not really sure. I don't know if I want a big bead. That might draw too much attention to the big beads on the side. And I want this to be really the main focal piece. So I think I'll nix the beads for now. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take my cutters when I'm happy with the length that I got. Okay. And I'm gonna do the same on the other side. Okay, so I cut my piece of chain. Now I'm going to cut another piece the same length. So I'm just going to put it side by side. Now remember, it's better to cut a piece that's a little longer than a piece that's shorter because you could always trim it if it's too long, but once it's cut, it's cut. Now it's very important to know that there is a back and a front side of your filigree. So if you're attaching them all one way and the other, it's going to be a real pain in the end. You want to make sure they're all the front facing, especially when you go to glue your acrylic gemstones. I'm going to go ahead and hook my jump ring. Right through the hole in the filigree. I'm going to take my one piece of chain and I'm going to hook it through and then I'm going to close the jump ring. Okay, so now that I've done that, I'm going to go take to the mirror to see if that's the way I like it hanging before I go and attach my clasp and my other big jump ring to the other side. Okay, so I went ahead and tried it and it actually is really good. And what I'm going to do is go ahead and attach my jump ring and decide which way you want your clasp. Do you prefer it on the left or the right? But if you're selling it to give it as a gift, uh, if you're going to give it as a gift, then you want to know, uh, is your friend that you're giving this to left or right-handed? What's easier for them to put the clasp? Now, if you're making them to sell, you would do it the regular way. You put the clasp on the right side. But, you know, you want to kind of personalize it if you're giving it as a gift to somebody and you want to do their preference. So what I'm going to do is I got my jump ring. Now... I have to get my clasp out and I got a pretty decent size lobster claw. I don't really like the tiny, tiny ones. They're like almost near to impossible. And you want to make sure it's facing down, not up. Okay, so make sure and be aware of how you're placing this. See how I do that? That's facing down and the button that you would use would be facing up. Okay. So I took my jump ring, I got my chain nose and round nose pliers, and now I'm going to close it and make sure that it's good and shut. Now the six millimeter jump rings work great for this, but they can be a bit flexible and sometimes open up on you. So that's, you know, a choice. You can buy thicker ones to just put two. So then you don't have to open that one. Just go like that. Take your chain nose and holding it with your round nose, close your jump ring. Now I'm going to go try it on and see if that works for me.
Okay, so I went ahead and I added some more jump rings because it really wasn't sitting the way I wanted it to. And so I added all in all seven jump rings. That hung exactly where I wanted it to. So you have the jump ring attached to the chain and then I had three, four, five, six, seven. And the seventh one goes into the clasp. Now it's very common for necklaces to have a series of jump rings. You should always think it's a bigger chain, but it's actually just jump rings. And sometimes they hang a decorative chain that's a little bit bigger so that your clasp can go in there. And it still looks nice and professional as long as it is the same color as your chain. You don't want to have like a silver batch of jump rings on a brass or gold chain. So make sure all your findings are the same color as the main item that you're working with. So you made sure that you've got the top parts facing. You can get, you could either do it with your tweezers or your finger, whatever your preference is. And you're going to get your glue, your E6000 glue, and your toothpicks and your rags ready. And take some glue, give your E6000 a little squeeze, and you don't need a lot because a little goes a long way. I would just place it on the center, and you don't need a lot of it, like I said, just a little. And then with your tweezer, go in and place it and then position it because this glue doesn't dry up immediately like it would if you were using a glue gun. And then later you can go in and clean it, the excess glue that dried, with a clean toothpick and you can just scrape it off because it's kind of we're almost like a glue gun but not where it does the stringy things and it dries up clear. Keep that in mind. It's clear. So you think it's where you want it and you press down with your finger gently. You could always clean the gemstone later for more of a shine with a q-tip and a little um, rubbing alcohol but make sure that you don't have a drenched one because then the rubbing alcohol will go underneath the acrylic and eat away at the glue and then it will fall off. Okay, so I've applied the glue and I'm going to let that dry now and I'm going to go in there later with my clean toothpick and I'm going to scrape around the edges and then I'm going to go with my Q-tip with rubbing alcohol that's been uh, wrung out, not, you know, totally drenched and then just gently go over the gemstones to give it that extra shine and clean them up so you don't have your fingerprints on there. Okay, so this is what it looks like all finished. And I'm going to show you what it looks like on me in a minute. But the acrylic gemstones are drying. They stuck pretty well before I hung them on here. You want to make sure before you hang them or play with them too much that they are adhering. So I let some time pass. And that's what it looks like. And it sits very nice on me. That's why I added the extra jump rings. But depending on what length you want, you could add as many jump rings or as little as you'd like. This is the back with my clasp and you see the seven jump rings. And it just blends in seamlessly with the rest of the chain because they are the same color. That's why getting the same color findings as what you're working with really matters because you want it to look all uniform and you want it to all go together and look professional. Okay, so this is the way it's going to sit on me. And this is what it looks like. I like the length. I don't want it any, you know, I don't think that it would look better any longer for me anyway. So this is the length that I chose and I like the way it sits and I like the way it looks. So thanks for watching and I hope you'll give this project a try. And if you do, let me know and show me the pictures. Goodbye.